I'm going to show you how to measure the effective R value of your house using one of these infrared thermometers. So what we need to do is we need to measure an object that is near the wall and the wall right next to that. So this dresser, we get about 14.8. Now let's measure the wall, 13.2. And it helps to go back and forth a few times to make sure the measurements are consistent. And it helps to stay on it for a while just to let it average. Again, 14.8. Check the wall again. 13.4. Dresser, 14.8. And the outside temperature is minus 15. So we have minus 15 outside, 13.3 at the surface of the wall, and the dresser is at 14.8, which is the ambient temperature of the room. So the wall is 1.5 degrees between the ambient and the wall surface. And the actual surface of the wall, there is a boundary layer here, and that also has an R value. And now looking up the R value for this boundary layer on the spreadsheet I put together, at a 1.5 degree temperature difference, the R value of the boundary layer is 0.738. So we have R 0.738, we have an R of unknown value here, and this is 1.5 degrees temperature difference, and through the wall we're going from 13.3 degrees to minus 15 degrees, or about uh, 28 degrees temperature difference, 28.3 degrees temperature difference. Now the heat transfer is the temperature difference divided by the R value. So on this side we have 1.5 degrees over R0.738 and that is equal to 28.3 degrees over R unknown. So if you flip both sides over we have R unknown over 28.3 is equal to 0 0.738 over 1.5. Now let's multiply both sides by 28.3 and we get our unknown is equal to 28.3 times 0 0.738 over 1.5 and that is equal to 13.9. So this house was built in 1964 and it has full insulation between the 2x4 studs but that should only be about R12. But we also have a layer of bricks on the outside which has a very minimal R value plus an inch and a quarter air gap and each of those has a boundary layer so that adds a little bit of R value and three quarter inch tongue and groove uh, sheeting and then also plaster on the inside. We also get some thermal bridging from the two by fours in here which would reduce the R value but overall, the uh, gap here, I think, adds enough R value to make up for it. Now, to be realistic, I'm actually kind of surprised that the numbers came out as close as they did because uh, measurements like that are always prone to quite a bit of error and these infrared thermometers are not super accurate either. This is actually my second infrared thermometer. This one cost uh, $40 Canadian on Amazon. Before that, I had this one, which cost only $20 at Canadian Tire. And I gotten various spurious readings from that one. When the battery gets low, it just reads wrong. And this one is also highly sensitive to what the temperature of the actual meter itself is. So you really want to make sure that the meter isn't changing temperature while you're using it. I just had this one in the basement, and this one, for instance, reads 22.6 off of this piece of paper. Well, this one reads 20.3, and that's because this meter is cold and that affects its readings. Mind you, for relative differences, that doesn't matter that much, but what really threw me off is these meters cheat a little bit, so if you read one spot and then you read another spot that's almost at the same temperature, it doesn't know that you're taking a new measurement, and it just continues to average in, so it doesn't really tell you the temperature difference. So what I find is... If I need to read two temperatures that are very close to each other, it helps to read a temperature that's far from these temperatures in between, like my hand, and then go back to what I wanted to read. And that way it knows it's a new reading because the temperature changed by a lot. 
And the other thing that is really important is this spreadsheet that calculates the R value. Now these calculations are all in metric and then I just convert to the imperial R value by multiplying by 5.6. If you've ever done thermodynamics in metric units and in imperial units, you know that uh, just don't use imperial for thermodynamics. It's not worth the trouble. And I calculate the R value by taking the thermal transfer coefficient across a surface and that consists of convective and infrared transfer. And for convective, I looked up uh, on the internet and I found this table here and that gives the uh, formula for a vertical surface and the heat transfer coefficient in watts per meter squared degrees is 1.8 times delta T raised to one quarter. Um, and actually that is that value there is one over the metric R value, which is uh, different from the imperial R value. So that is the uh, convective heat transfer. The infrared heat transfer I got off of Wikipedia off of this chart. And rather than trying to get too precise about it, I just drew a straight line here to figure out what the slope of this line is at room temperature. And here we have again watts per meter squared. And along the bottom we have uh, temperature in degrees. And so I took the slope of that line and worked out what the uh, temperature transfer is infrared. And I didn't actually vary that by temperature because if we look on here, between ice and body temperature, which is the temperature range we're looking at, the slope doesn't actually vary that much. So between those two, I worked out the metric R value and from that the imperial R value because we're used to, at least here, in dealing with imperial R values in that when you have fiberglass insulation, you know it's about R12 for a uh, space between 2 by 4s I also have here, based on the temperature difference, what the heat loss is in watt per meter squared, which is very useful for figuring out how much heat you're actually losing through the walls. And one of these infrared thermometers is also very useful for figuring out how much heat you're losing through the windows. So that window reads 15.4 degrees and the inside wall is 20.2. So we got about five degrees temperature difference so we're losing a lot more heat per surface area on windows than walls. Now I know in the past every time I included math in the video a lot of my audience kind of goes blah, 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 blah. So uh, to take mercy on you I actually included the rest of the calculations in the spreadsheet so you can just use the temperature degree difference and then the difference to the outside and look up the calculated R value on the spreadsheet. And you can download that spreadsheet at the link in the video description.